talking about uh, digital circuits and digital logic. Uh, and we're going to be building some stuff with the circuit boards here in a minute. Um, but let me just go through a couple of the basic things uh, to get started. Um, so the first is uh, when you wire something up, uh, electronic stuff, we're using direct current, not alternating current. So uh, if, um, has anybody ever changed like an outlet or a switch in your house? Yeah, so that's AC, okay? So typically when you open up a, an outlet uh, plate or something, you're actually gonna see three wires. You're gonna see a hot, a neutral, and a ground. Um, and, uh, but there's no real difference between plus and minus because that's the whole point of alternating current is it alternates. Uh, electronics use direct current um, and the convention for this is that we, we say that current flows from positive to negative. Okay, and the convention on color coding for this is usually the positive is indicated in red and the negative uh, or ground is indicated in black. Uh, anybody ever jump started a car? Same thing, right? The positive terminal, you know which one's which, uh, other than the labeling because it's red and then the other one is, is black. Uh, okay, so what we're gonna use for our power source is uh, this little small circuit board called an Arduino and the Arduino will allow us to um, do a couple of other things, but for right this instant, we can just use it as a as sort of a regulated power supply. Um, and along the side, there are these little holes that you can stick a tiny little wire down in, and it's a little hard to see on the screen probably, but the holes are all labeled, so I've got a plus five volts and a ground pin and then I've just got them wired over to this sort of row of holes. That row or that grid is called a breadboard. I'm not entirely sure why, but that's what we call it. Um, and uh, the way that these things are, are manufactured is there's two rows at the top and the bottom. The top row going horizontally, they're all internally connected. So if I connect something to this pin, and then I connect something to any of the other pins that are in that top row, they are connected. So there's little metal uh, strips running inside the breadboard. The second row is connected all to it together. And then the, those two down there at the bottom in two uh, further separate rows are all connected. And then in the middle part, instead of it being the rows are connected, it's the columns that are connected. So uh, this column here, those five holes, are all internally connected. These five down here are connected, but they don't connect across the little divider in the middle, okay? Um, and the, the different columns are not connected to each other. So this column and this column are not connected unless you put a wire that goes in between them. Okay, so that's the, the convention for how the breadboard uh, is, how the breadboard's laid out, okay? Um, and the, uh, these rails at the top and the bottom, what sometimes call them power rails, because often you're gonna put plus five volts on one of them and ground on the other. It doesn't have to be in any particular orientation, uh, but a good convention is to put plus five volts at the top and ground at the bottom uh, and kind of think of it that way. Um, as long as you keep everything straight though, it, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so the other thing is that the convention about power, direct power, uh, current power, is that current flows from positive to negative. Okay, so what we say that, we call that conventional current. However, that's actually wrong. Okay, so uh, the electron was later discovered, and which way do the electrons actually go? They go from negative to positive, okay? So current, when we talk about current flowing, it's actually going the exact opposite of the electrons. We had a 50-50 chance of having conventional current be correct, and we guessed wrong. 
but it's been that way for so long that just deal with it. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, current flows from positive to negative, even though the electrons are going the opposite direction. Okay. Uh, good. Now, for this very stupid little circuit, all that there is is a light, some wires, and then this little thing right here. Okay, so two things. What is this light called? Anybody know? Yeah, it's an LED, which stands for what? Yes, light emitting diode. Okay, so. A diode is an electric um, component that kind of functions like a one-way valve, okay? It will only let electricity go through it one direction, and if you flip it around, it won't, okay? Um, a light-emitting diode is a diode. It just happens to also give off visible light. Um, and you can get these in kind of pretty much whatever colors you want, um, and... Of course, nowadays, you guys probably all have, like, RGB, like, stuff in your computers, right, with lights all over the place, and you can make any color by mixing red, green, and uh, blue. Um, okay, so, anyway, uh, nothing particularly fancy, so hang on one second here. Let me um, remove some components. Okay, so... Um, so that's what this thing is. And then you notice that there's this little crook on one of the legs, okay, on the real thing. And you guys will see this in a minute when I pass out the buckets. There's one of the tails that's a little bit longer than the other one. Okay, it, since the LED is a diode, it has, like, you can't put it in backwards or it won't work. So how do you know which side is which? The long side is the positive side. Okay, and the short side is, is therefore the negative or ground side. Um, and in the little software that I use to make this, you wouldn't be able to tell long or short when you stick it into the holes. And so what they do is they just put a little bend on the one that's going to be the positive side. Okay. All right. So let me switch over to... Uh, okay, I need my mouse here. Okay, so I've got my Arduino, my breadboard. Oops, let me zoom this in a little bit. And let me plug it in. Okay, so um, the last thing uh, that was in my diagram is this, which is called a resistor. So the um, if I just connected this LED without the resistor, it would burn out. And the reason is I'd be trying to put too much electricity through it, okay? Um, and that's bad. So um, if you imagine electricity kind of like water moving through a garden hose, what would happen if you kinked the hose a little bit or you squished it? Yeah, you'd restrict the amount of water that was able to flow through the hose, and so not as much would be coming out the other end, okay? A resistor kind of does the same thing, but with electricity. It impedes electricity flowing through or resists it so that you don't put too much electrical current through a component and fry it, okay? These things come in various values of resistance. Um, for this LED, I'm using a 330-ohm resistor. Um, it's not a particularly high resistance, um, but it's better than using nothing because I literally would burn it out if uh, I just did that. Okay, so I'm going to put my resistor here, my LED there, and then the I'm going to go from the negative side to ground, and voila, it lit up. Good? All right, so that's not rocket science. That's just an LED. Okay, so let me go back to the this. 
Oops. Okay. Um, all right, so we'll wire up that circuit here in a minute. Okay, now the reason that we're using an Arduino is because um, if I, instead of using the plus five volt uh, pin, I'm still gonna use ground, but instead there's all of these pins up here at the top that are numbered, okay? And I can write a simple program that the Arduino will run to using software tell those pins to turn either on or off, okay? And so we can make it blink in an interesting pattern, for example. All right, so if I just switch my positive one here over to pin two, then you'll notice it's blinking once per second. Oh, you can't see it because, um, yeah, sorry. There we go. Okay, it's blinking once per second. So I have the ability to control whether or not something's turned on or off by software, which will be useful later. Okay, um, but same idea. And we'll look at the, the program that's actually running here uh, in a minute. Okay, so let's go back to this because what I wanna start talking about um, is the transistor. Okay, so from the documentary, right, why did vacuum tubes suck? Huh? There are too many of them to, like, and, and so when we say too many, well, okay, that in of itself doesn't suck, but what about the too many sucks? Yeah, they burn out. So if you have 100,000 of these, the odds of all 100,000 working simultaneously, uh, not happening, right? So that was the, the tyranny of numbers or whatever it was called, right? Okay, what else sucks about a vacuum tube? They're big and they take a shitload of energy, okay? Now contrast that to the transistor, this little guy, right? Now compare this to a light bulb, right? A lot smaller doesn't burn out unless you're stupid and put too much electricity through it. Okay, but it's not just going to burn out randomly like a, a vacuum tube would. Heck of a lot smaller, uh, heck of a lot more um, reliable, uh, and hence you can pack together hundreds of thousands of these and be pretty confident that everything's going to work correctly. Okay. Um, all right, so, but how does this thing actually work is the question, right? What is the purpose of it, okay? So transistor, uh, the original, well, it, there are two major uses for the, the original transistors, okay? One is as an amplifier, and two is as a uh, digital switch, okay? So we're going to talk about two different big categories of transistors. And within each big category, we'll talk about a couple of subcategories. Okay, so the first category we'll talk about, big category, are BJTs, which stands for Bipolar Junction Transistor. Okay, these were basically the second kind that were developed commercially. Uh, and the, the very first obvious application of these uh, was in uh, consumer radios. Okay, so I think I mentioned uh, at some point that back in the day, your radio, you know, before people had TVs, it had a vacuum tube in it. And the reason it needed to have a vacuum tube in it is because the radio signal that you're getting from the station is a pretty weak signal. But you need to be able to listen to it on the speaker. So you'd have to amplify that signal in order to be able to hear anything. Okay, um, and so radios would have the vacuum tubes in them. They were user replaceable. If you thought your, your tube was bad, you took it to the hardware store or the drug store. They had a tester that you could plug it into and see if it was working or not. And if it wasn't, then you could buy the replacement just right there on the shelves. You just had to find the right model for your uh, radio. Well, okay, transistor is a lot smaller, right? And in particular, this meant that you could even build portable radios that would be comfortable to carry around. Um, okay, so 
Now, how does that actual amplification happen? So let's look at a diagram for a transistor. Okay, so this, um, within the bipolar junction transistors, BJTs, there are two subtypes, NPN and PNP. Okay, and the N and the P mean something. So what is this stuff made out of? It's silicon, right? Uh, silicon is a metal that's a semiconductor, meaning that it will conduct electricity under some conditions, but not all conditions. Okay. Uh, unlike something like copper, which is a very good conductor of electricity. That's why we make wires out of it. Okay. Um, so whether or not the silicon is going to conduct electricity depends on how you basically, um, uh, synthesize it and in semiconductors what we do we uh is we deliberately introduce impurities into the silicon okay we call this doping and we do so in order to change the electrical properties of the the material okay so we can dope it in one of two ways by uh so actually good question uh, where is silicon on the periodic table? How many valence electrons? Huh? Yeah, four valence electrons. Okay. And so if you have silicon in a crystal, then how is it going to buddy up with other silicon atoms? What would you expect? If it's, if every, so how many uh, valence electrons does the atom want to have? eight but it only has four so how's it going to get eight well it can share a pair with a neighbor and if it shares a pair with four neighbors then everybody's happy right we all got eight valence electrons okay so um but other chemicals okay in fact let's just pull up a periodic table that's probably a good idea All right, here we go. So there's our handy dandy periodic table. Okay, so silicon right there. Well, what is just to the left of it, uh, boron and aluminum, and just to the right of it, phosphorus, okay? So if I deliberately introduce some boron into a silicon crystal, then it's a little bit short of electrons, right? And if I instead introduce a little bit of phosphorus, it's a little bit too heavy on electrons, okay? So by doping things that way, and then putting layers of these things next to each other, I can get, uh, build this thing called a transistor, okay? Uh, now, I'm grossly oversimplifying this stuff. And for our purposes right this instant, we can just think of a transistor as being magic, right? It's magic. And if you want to learn how the magic works, you go down the hall to physics 112 and they'll tell you everything. Okay. All right. So let's go back to this. So the way that this works, there are three connectors on a transistor. Okay. And what they're called depends on what type it is. But for the NPN, uh, it works like this. So you guys see, um, well, you'll see it in a minute. There's a flat side and a round side. If I put the flat side facing towards me, then the one that's labeled B is in the middle, C is on the left, and E is on the right, okay? And those letters stand for something, the base, the collector, and the emitter. Okay, so got that. The way this works is if I apply a very small electric current to the base, it comes out the emitter. And if I do so, it induces a much larger current that goes from the collector to the emitter. This is how it can amplify, okay? So if I wanted to have this in a radio, the signal coming from the antenna, the radio station, would go into the base, very weak signal. And then I'd have uh, power connected to C and E would go to my speaker. Okay, seem reasonable? So what this would do is the very small amount of electric current coming from the um, the antenna would be amplified to 
same signal, just bigger current coming through the collector and out the emitter through my speaker, and then I could be able to hear the thing. Okay, so that's how uh, BJTs work. Um, so, but I can also use this as a switch because if I don't put current on the base, then no current is going to flow through the thing. And if I do put current on the base, then current will flow through the thing. Well, now I have a switch, right, that can either be turned on or off, basically. Okay. Um, so, does that kind of make sense? Question, preguntas, fragen. No? Okay. So, um, let me wire this thing up. Okay. Let me go back to the web kingdom. Um, okay. So, I'm going to make some changes here. The first is I'm going to put the this back on the plus 5 volts. Um, oh, and I forgot the ground. Okay, so that light is just constant on. Okay, and then I'm going to connect pin 2 over here to the plus on the bottom set of rails. And then I'm going to put a transistor here. Okay, and you guys see the flat side is facing down on the screen. Yeah, okay. Now, <clears throat> I need to put a resistor uh, between, actually, you know what, I'm going to move this down here for convenience. I need to put a resistor there on the basis, okay? So, this resistor is much, much bigger than the resistor I used for the LED. This one is 10 uh, kilo ohms, okay? So, 10,000 versus 330. Okay, and the reason is I only want to put just the tiniest amount of, of current onto my base. Okay, all right, then I'm going to put, um, well, I need to steal some parts here, so hang on one second. I need to cannibalize. Okay. So I'll do power to here. And then I'll do my resistor to here, and then my LED, and then I'll go to ground. Okay, so. And now it's blinking again, just like it was before. Okay, so how I've got it is the pin this one is turning on and off, and that's what's connected to the base of the transistor. If the thing connected to the base is on, it turns the transistor on, and if it's not, then it's not, okay? So I now have a switch that uh, allows me to control whatever is happening with the, the light. Okay, so does that kind of make sense? Yeah, okay. So. Let's actually start to wire these things up. All right, so get in groups of three and grab one of the eight buckets that's up here on the top of the cart, not the ones on the bottom. And we'll start to talk about what's inside. Okay. So make buddies um, because you're going to be doing this stuff with your buddies for several weeks now. Okay, two things. One, uh, there are exactly 24 of you. 24 divided by 8 is 3, last time I checked. The other thing is take note of the number or letter on the side of your bucket. Okay, remember that. That will be important later. Okay, so open up the buckets and let's talk about all the stuff that's inside. Okay, there's a bunch of little plastic uh, snack baggies, 
Okay, and these have all of the different components that we're going to use over the next few weeks of working with these things. Okay, and they're all labeled. So, oh, well, except the LEDs, although I, I figured that that would be pretty obvious what they were. Okay, so you've got some LEDs. You've got two baggies, one that's labeled FET in and the other one FET P. Uh, those are the other kind of transistor. Uh, called MOSFETs, Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor, or MOSFET for short. Say that five times fast. Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor, right? Well, it's, it's kind of like wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. No? From Family Guy? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, then you've got a bunch of resistors. Those are labeled, so there's 220. 1K, 10K, 330, and then the transistors are labeled BJTN because these are NPNs and they're BJTs. Okay, then you've got a little bag of breadboard wire, and uh, so just go ahead and open that up. You've got three breadboards, and you have uh, the Arduino, which some of them are still in the package, so you can go ahead and open them. Yeah, so don't you get smart with me. I will cut you. <laughs> um, okay, and then you also have a digital multimeter, uh, which we don't need right this instant, but we'll use it uh, eventually. Okay, so the multimeter will allow us to uh, measure voltages and resistances and current and stuff like that. Um, now, look at all the resistors okay, that are labeled. What would happen if they weren't labeled? How would you tell them apart? Okay, the physical size actually won't do it. Huh? Yeah, okay, so look at very carefully at all the resistors. You see that there's different colored stripes on them? So there is a pattern, and I've got little cheat sheets, they're getting laminated, um, that tells you how to read the resistances off of the bands. Okay, um, however, what if you're colorblind? Okay, yes, that would suck. Okay, but this being a men's college, the odds of some of you guys being colorblind is actually pretty high because men uh, are more often colorblind than women. That's where the multimeter comes in, okay, uh, as sort of the alternative method of, of checking which resistance is which. Uh, but I went through a lot of trouble putting these things in labeled baggies. So what should you do when you're done with them? Put them back into the labeled baggies and then you don't have to worry about it, okay? Uh, okay, so uh, on computers that you guys have, uh, open up Canvas and there's a link to these Arduino notes, or sorry, the uh, transistor notes uh, right there on the homepage. Okay, so that's thing number one. Thing number two is these notes I've been working and adding to these things for years. They're still a work in progress, but the link on Canvas always will point to the most recent version, uh, thanks to the magic of Dropbox. Okay, so uh, I don't have to remember to upload revisions after I make them. Uh, okay, so what I'd like you guys to do is get basically circuit number two wired up. Let me go back to the nodes for a second. Okay, so in circuit number two, okay, you're going to have two LEDs and which color is which doesn't matter. I, I picked red and green here in my diagram, but it doesn't have to be that way. Um, and I've got two resistors. So this circuit is going to have the red LED will always be on because it's connected straight to the power. And the green LED is connected to pin two and accordingly will blink on and off, okay? But there's one other step other than the wiring, which is the Arduino needs to know what program to run, okay? And the code for that is right here. Okay, and in fact, if you click right there, 
where it says LED circuit two dot INO, it will actually take you uh, it, and you can download that file and open it. Now, what software do you need in order to do this? The Arduino software that I sent you guys a Canvas message about yesterday. Okay. Um, okay. So what is this program doing? Well, nothing particularly fancy. I've got a setup section and a loop section that's just going to run over and over again. And all I'm doing in the setup is saying, okay, I want pin two to be an output pin. And then in the loop section, I'm going to turn pin two to high, which is the voltage level. So basically on, wait for a thousand milliseconds, turn it off and wait for another thousand milliseconds. And so that's just going to alternate it off, on, off, on. You can obviously change the numbers um, to smaller if you wanted to blink faster. If that, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, 1,000 was just sort of arbitrarily chosen. Because um, if you make it too fast and you might like, you, you either wouldn't be able to see it or you might start to get dizzy or something if you have epilepsy. Um, yeah, okay. So, um, so that's the program you're going to use. And then to actually get it onto the Arduino, you have to use the Arduino software, which let me open that up real quick. Okay, so that's there. And once you've got the thing plugged into your USB port on your computer, you just hit that little right arrow button. It will do some processing and it will transfer your program over to the board, okay? Um, okay, so let's get circuit number two wired up, okay? And uh, using the Arduino thing, get the code sent to the board, okay? Now, one nice thing about the Arduinos is once you upload this code to the board, let's say you unplug it and you plug it back in, it will remember this program and start running it when you power it back on. So you don't have to send the program to the board every time you use it. Uh, that's kind of convenient. Okay, so we guys got the idea? We? Okay. We're going to try. So now it's just a bunch of wiring. Can we count the voltage strike for the diagram to figure out which type of switch to be through? Go back up. We're doing circuit number two. One more. That one. It doesn't have to be exactly the same number. So it just has to be equivalent. So how do I download that onto the... Onto the Arduino? Mm -hmm. So go down to... Uh, sorry. Uh, the, this. So that program, so download it. And then did you install the Arduino software yet? I mean, I clicked the link and this is what... I okay, so this is the online version. Yeah, uh, which is new. I haven't actually used it yet, but you can just either copy and paste that stuff into here, or if, uh, oops, sorry. Okay, okay. There should be a, like an open uh, button somewhere around here. So, uh, yeah, either one. Okay. okay. All right, so let me go back to the picture. There. Okay. Okay. So two LEDs, two 330 ohm resistors. Um, and a general rule of thumb is if you're driving an LED, it's always pretty much always going to be a 330 ohm resistor. Okay. Um, so you need two of each of those and then uh, a handful of wires. Uh, the other thing is that the wire colors don't have to be matching what's in here. So, for example, I don't think there's a bright green in there. This is just what the software had. Um, but I've tried to stick with the convention of using 5 volts for red, ground, black, and other things with other colors. But it's not perfect, as you guys will swiftly find out.
Okay, if we're good? No? You don't look good? All right, so what do we need? Oh, because it's not done yet. So let's try it again. Oops. I think you may be out of disk space. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. Uh, just use his. Yeah. Um, for right this instance, okay, uh, and we can look at that later. Um, okay, so you've got it connected, all right, um, so now get the components and start wiring it up according to the diagram, right? So how many resistors to which size? Uh, Three thirties, right? Two LEDs, doesn't matter what colors. Uh, and then a handful of the wire, okay? Okay, so when this is all said and done, what should you guys see? The red light or whatever your first one should just stay on, and the other one should be blinking. It doesn't matter. Um, so, I mean, you can't always just flip it that way, but it doesn't really matter. It just, so the labeling, right? In the diagram, I've got minus here, pin two there, five volts up here. Does that make sense? Okay, so in your diagram, it's like this? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, the, well, in the diagram, you'll notice there aren't the little pluses and minuses. So let's just move this guy over here. So, so do, let's do, all right, so plus five volts is this one here. Okay, so there. All right, then get a black one to go from here to the one that says ground. There's actually two of them, it doesn't matter which one. Yeah. Okay. And now you need to connect this to that and this to ground, but there also needs to be the resistor. Okay. So for example, we could put or get a shorter one, right? The positive side is on the right. Okay. So put this here then go to the resistor on the negative side. So you can either you can either go just across the bridge okay and then do one more to connect it to ground. Right? Now, it doesn't look exactly the same there, right? But it's equivalent, mm -hmm. right? Um, and the other thing about the software that I use to make those diagrams is um, it forces me to have the positive side of the LED on the right, even though there's no physical reason it has to be that way. Um, but yeah, okay. So now you're gonna do the same thing but the second LED will get its power not from plus five volts, but from pin two. So pin two over there, and be careful because you'll notice that there's actually a pin zero, mm -hmm. right? So that is pin two, and then we're gonna put this one on the plus rail down at the bottom mm -hmm. for convenience, okay? So now the three wires you need to connect, you've gotta connect this, the LED, the resistor, and that. Uh, here? Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the ones that are in the middle, the groups of five, those run vertically. 
the ones at the top and bottom run horizontally. Okay. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. And the longer leg on the LED, which that's the crook in the diagram, which side does that go on? Mm -hmm. The positive side. Right, so you connect positive to the long side, and then the other side goes to ground. The resistor can be on either side, it doesn't matter. Um, but but the, uh, the electricity can only go through the LED in one direction. You can't flip it around. Right, so like if you took your red LED and flipped it, it wouldn't, turn, it wouldn't work. Okay. All right, you guys doing okay? Making sense? Yeah? Okay, so, all right, so you don't have anything um, grounded yet. Okay, so, or actually you have everything grounded. So, ground, right, pin two. So, have you uploaded the program that turns pin two on and off to the board? Okay, so, let me look at why this is not working then. Okay, because the circuit's incomplete. So you've gone from pin two to this, to the resistor, to the LED, but then there's one wire missing to connect the LED back to ground. And the LED may be backwards. Okay. So, yeah, the LED was backwards. Okay, so you have to go, um, it has to be, um, okay, so let me, let me rearrange this a little bit. There's the ground, and then, This is not working then. Oh, because the program's not running. Okay, so this LED should just stay on. Okay, it's the second one that's green in my picture that we'll put here. That's the one that'll be connected to pin two. Okay, so we'll take a wire and go from pin two, and you can put it. In my diagram, I've got it connected here on the, the, the top row. Okay, so now you've got there, that's the, the big wire that's in bright green. So now you need the, the four things that are at the far right. So the LED, another resistor, and two wires. Okay, and then you've got to upload the program to the board, which, okay, so it's... Um, okay, when you copied and pasted, I think it probably screwed up the... Yeah, it was bad. I had to, like, backspace everything. Yeah. Because um, the language that this is written in is extremely picky about spacing. And... Okay, so... Let's try that. Okay, here, let's try this instead. I'm just going to download it instead of copying and pasting because, okay, so let's download that and then let's actually open it with the Arduino software. It'll make a folder. Okay, and then now the formatting got all messed up. Okay, so we're connecting to an Arduino Uno on port 3. Okay, you'll see some blinking happening there um, as it transfers the program, and now it's done. So when you finish wiring up that other light, that one should be blink on and off. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Good. All right. Do we have a blinking light yet? Yeah, it looks like it. 
Okay, good. Getting there. Okay, this red one should be permanently on. So, yeah, that's why. Right, of course, are sometimes a little stiff. Okay. So, there. So, you had, well, I think you had two problems. One, it was in reverse, and two, the black wire that's going back to ground was on the same side, so you actually had a short circuit. Um, okay, so this one should just stay on, right? And then this one, you've got, okay, so we'll do. Flip it this way. Ground here. Resistor on the positive side. Okay, which is the that side of the LED. Yeah. Okay, that's not connected, right? Remember, in the middle, it's in groups of five, so you'd want it like here. Okay, does that make sense? So the um, these five are connected internally, but this one and this one are not connected. Now on the top and the bottom row they are. The, the in, yeah, exactly. In the, in the middle it's the columns rather than the rows. Okay. So then you've got your resistor, and so the only thing left is just get me a wire. Um, the only thing left is if we connect this, which is the positive side of the LED, to here, then this LED should blink whenever pin 2 is turned on. Now right now, pin 2 is not turned on because we haven't uploaded the program to it. Right? But we can test whether or not we've got the circuit correct, because if I connect this straight to plus 5 volts, it turns on. Right? So I know I've got the light wire correctly, and so then if I plug this in here, then go to your Arduino program, that, okay, and all you have to do then is hit this little right arrow. It will do some processing and then send that over to the board. Um, oh, yeah, okay, so sometimes it'll throw an error. You just go to Tools, Board is an Arduino, one Uno, port is COM3. Sometimes you have to manually select that, it doesn't automatically detect it. You'll see some blinking as it transfers the program, and now it's working, right? So before pin two was being, was never, like we never told the board to turn it off and on, and so it just, just sat there off, okay. All right, does that make sense? Okay, uh, good? Oh, man. You suck, yeah, and you're losing pieces. All right, so do you have the two LEDs? Do you have two 330 ohm resistors? Those, okay, so you just pull these out of the, it's just a little cardboard, okay. So let's get the first one wired up. It's red in my picture. Okay, so long side is the positive side, okay. So I'll put the positive there and the negative there. And then I need to have my resistor. Okay. And then we need to get me a couple of short wires. It doesn't matter what color. Yeah, okay. So then we go from the positive to the positive side of the LED from the, the negative side of the LED is connected to the resistor, and we go from the resistor down to ground. Okay. Make sense? How do you know where to put the resistor? So uh, it doesn't matter if it's before or after the LED, because the resistor, like, it doesn't matter which way the electricity is flowing through it. Um, 
so generally when you do this, you just pick whichever side makes it tidier on the breadboard, but it doesn't actually matter, okay? All right, now for the other LED, okay, let's put it down here and positive is on the left, okay? Then let's connect this one to pin two and we'll connect pin two to the second row down there, okay? We need one of these, right? And we can go from, so you can use, you don't have to have wires all the time. Uh, all right, one more wire. Okay, you, you can, if you kind of think about it, like I've used this both as the resistor and as a wire. Um, okay, so that's from the negative side to ground. Okay, and right now it's not doing well. Actually, it is right. So you pro you sent this program over to the board, and so we've got pin um, pin two is connected to the top row. Okay, so the the way it goes, pin two to the top row through the resistor through the LED back out the LED back to ground. Right, so circuit, it's got to go, it's got to get eventually from either power or a pin, okay, from that to ground. And so you just have to kind of follow the thing to make sure that it makes the complete circuit. And then the remaining part of the circuit that makes it a loop is inside the Arduino, okay. And so, there. Now, you'll notice that this doesn't necessarily look exactly like my diagram in terms of what's where the things are plugged in but it's equivalent to it, right? And that's all that matters is it just has to be equivalent, okay? Okay, uh, so it's lunchtime, woo-hoo! Um, okay, so do we all have it to the point where we've got one solid and one blinking? No, okay, I'll look at it and see why. Okay, uh, is this kind of starting to make sense? A little bit? How many of you guys have never done this before? Okay, that's most of you, that's what I thought, okay. Now, where we're going with this, I mean, other than, hey, it's pretty cool to make a light blink, right? You can make a, your own Christmas ornaments. Where we wanna go with this is, what happens, and we'll talk about this first thing on, uh, on Wednesday, what happens if I start using multiple transistors? Ah, okay. Then I can get it so that, for example, if one pin controls one transistor and another pin controls another transistor and I connect the two transistors together in some way, shape or form, then I could make it so that both pins have to be on for the transistors, plural, to allow data through. That's an AND gate. Okay, so that's where we're going with this. Uh, and then we'll also talk about the other major category of transistor uh, sometime next week. Okay, so um, one other thing before you guys go is exchange contact information with your bucket, bucket brigade um, because we're gonna be, you guys will be doing projects with your bucket people um, for the next few weeks, okay? Um, so yeah, exchange contact info and also just remember what la label is on your bucket. Um, yeah, okay? All right, see you guys later.